Hey guys, Rebecca here. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying summer. Today's lesson will be on prayer. Prayer is important no matter what season of the year it is or what season of life we're going through. We always have the option to pray. Prayer is important because it's how we communicate to God, the one true God who created the entire universe. Today we'll be reading Psalm 5, verses 1 through 3 and verse 11, and we'll be reading Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Both of these books are in the Old Testament. So now go ahead and pause here so you can grab your Bible and read along. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I will pray. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. But let all those who rejoice you put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy, because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. Daniel 6 10 Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Okay. Now that we have read through the passages, let's talk about them. Both of these men prayed to God because they recognized that they had a need for him and they had a relationship with him. They recognized that God was the only one who was able to help them. So let's look at how in Psalm 5, David prayed to God. David, at this point in history, about 3,000 years ago, was the king of Israel. That means he was the most powerful man in all of Israel. And what did he do? Well, he sought God for help. He asked God, we see first in verse 1 and in the beginning of 2, that he asked God to listen to his prayer for help. He didn't demand God's help. He didn't think or assume that he could just go to God because he was awesome and deserved it. Um, he went to God because he knew God is awesome and he wanted God to talk to him and to listen to him. So he asked God. We also see that David, who was the king, that he acknowledged God as the one true king. God is the true king who rules over all. Then we see that David prayed in the morning. He says, My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. I will direct it to you and look up. This is a really good example to follow. Praying in the morning is a good thing. You don't have to pray in the morning. And you can pray multiple times throughout the day or pray in the evening. But when we pray in the morning first thing, it is a blessing to us because it helps us to remember that God is in control and to live the day for him and seeking his help throughout the day. Then it says, I will look up. Some translations say, and I will wait expectantly. So what that means is we have confidence knowing that according to God's word, that anything we ask according to God's will, he hears. And so maybe you have asked God for something that you, that you know is according to his will, so you know it's good, and he doesn't answer right away. But we can rest assured that God's timing is perfect. So even if it takes a week or two weeks or two years for an answer to come, that God is good and he will answer in his time and his timing will be perfect. 
Now let's look at Daniel and how what Daniel did. When Daniel prayed to God, this was at a point in history about 2,600 years ago when the Israelites, not all of them, but a lot of them, had been taken captive and carried away into the country of Babylon. And Daniel was one of these people. He was a prophet of God. And the king at this time, King Darius, he had just made a law that said that no one could pray to anyone or anything but him. And if they did that, that they would be killed. So Daniel, he, because he has this relationship with God and he loves God and he still prays to God the same way he had always done. And it says that it was his custom from since his early days, meaning that Daniel had learned to pray each and every day. It was a practice that he had done. And it's a good thing for us to do. Um, praying each day, making it part of your lifestyle, is just as important as eating breakfast or brushing your teeth. It's something that we need to do each and every day. We get to pray to God. God is the all-powerful creator of the entire universe. He is so big, he's everywhere at the same exact time. He knows everything. He knows everyone's name who is here, who has lived before us, and who will live after us. God knows everything, and more, um, just as important as all of those things, God loves us. He loves each and every person, and he wants us to know him. He wants us to come to him and to pray. There's a promise that God gives us in Jeremiah 29, 13. It says, and you will find me. I'm going to read it exactly so I don't paraphrase it. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So if you truly want a relationship with God, if you want to know him and love him, and um, then and you seek him and you pray to him and you read the Bible and you can go to church and you um, keep learning and growing, you will come to know God. And he made a way for us all to know him. He did that by sending Jesus, his son, to die on the cross for us and rise again on the third day so that the payment for our sins would be paid by Jesus' death. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he made a way for us all to come to God. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we can come to God and we can seek him freely because of Jesus. We don't have to pray to people or to saints or to statues. In fact, those things are not God and they have no power. The only way to truly seek God is through Christ. It's coming to God because of what Jesus has done for us. And not only that, but there's something else that God says in his word. It's in the book of Hebrews. And it says that all who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So when you come to God, it's good to um, acknowledge and to know and to choose to believe that he is the one true God who created the entire universe. He sustains the universe. The everything that is in motion, how the earth and the sun and the whole solar system move about, that's all kept in place and continues to function because of God who has set in place these things to sustain it and to sustain us. And he loves us madly, deeply, truly, more than we can ever think or imagine. God loves us and he wants us to communicate and talk to him and have a relationship with him. He wants us to do this each and every day. And when we realize that we need God, it becomes easy to seek him because we know that he is truly where our help comes from. And so we can do this each and every day and be so blessed by having 
that open communication and relationship with God simply by praying. So I hope um, you all continue to grow in knowing God and how much he loves you. God bless you all. Goodbye.